Good evening. It is June 13th, 2013. This is Jason Horak reporting on the ongoing adventures of the Dodge Daytona electric vehicle. Uh, as you can see, we have two new DC to DC converters. These are the 400 watt units from EVTV. And I just got these in uh, actually yesterday, but I didn't have time to make a video until today, so here we are. Uh, anyway, um, this first unit looks good, you know, it looks brand new and wonderful and everything. Um, this other unit, I just wanted to document um, that when I pulled it out of the box, I noticed that the box had some potting material that had kind of leaked out um, and touched the, the box. Um, and then on the bottom of the unit, you can see there's like cardboard stuck to it. Um, just from a little bit of the material that had leaked out. Um, it, it may be fine, uh, but based on my history with these converters and the last one making the bad noises for a year um, and then, you know, smoking itself, I just wanted to at least document what was going on when I first got these units. Um, one thing you also might notice is that this one has screws uh, on the bottom. Uh, whereas this one does not. I don't know why. It doesn't seem to make any... It probably doesn't make any difference, but um, I just thought it was a little bit odd that two identical units from the same uh, shipment ended up being kind of different. Um, so I'm not sure how well the camera's going to make out these uh, labels on the end, but uh, this one is... a. Uh, JCD135-19219. <laughs> and this one is the same. Um, so they're the same models. They're the, the 120, or sorry, 192 volt uh, units. And uh, they, this one says, four, both of them actually say 480 watts. Um, so that's, that's cool. Um, but anyway, uh, again, <laughs> I ran one of these in my car for over a year with it making uh, bad hissing noises and being really hot, and it worked just fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and install this in the car anyway, um, rather than trying to return it and so forth, um, just because it may work just fine. Uh, so I'm going to get it wired up, and uh, I guess we'll come back when that happens. One thing that I also wanted to uh, point out was that uh, they're not gluing the um, inductor and the diodes on the top of these anymore, which is nice, because that was kind of a pain to take off. Um, and instead, I got the diodes here in the bag. Um, and I guess they've done away with using the inductor at all. Apparently, it wasn't necessary or didn't seem to be doing anything for them. So anyway, a little bit of change. Um, I still have the inductor in my... Uh, weatherproof box in the car, as well as the diode from the first converter. I'll probably be using those and just leaving it as is um, for the high voltage supply side. And uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, at least I've got some spare diodes should they be necessary. Anyway, take care, and I'll catch up with you on the next pass. Okay, uh, after a considerable amount of effort getting the uh, different plugs on the DC to DC converters and then wiring them up in the car. Uh, I've got it all installed. So I just wanted to take you through real quick and show you what's going on. So as you can see, I've mounted one of the DC to DC converters. Um, actually, this is the one that had the little bit of goo sticking out the bottom um, on this side. And it is very securely attached to the firewall. And it, you can pretty much lift the car by that thing, so it's, it's very secure. Um, and then what I did was I put on the low voltage side one of these Anderson connectors. So it's a 50 amp Anderson connector, and this thing's rated at, what, 45, 35, something like that. So it really should be fine. Um, on the high voltage side, I ended up using one of these monitor uh, power cables, very similar to how I did in the past. Um, which just makes it easy to plug it in and unplug it. Um, you know, this is probably rated for 15 amps or something coming out of the wall, and we're going to be pulling a few amps through it, you know, up to like four or something uh, at 200 volts. So 
no big deal. Uh, it's definitely more than adequate to handle the load. Um, so on the car side of things, I'm not sure how well the camera will make this out, but basically we've got another Anderson connector. This is hooked directly into the the battery, uh, positive and negative. And then this is our little uh, computer power cord. Uh, again, just the three prong. Uh, the ground is not used in this case uh, because it's actually hooked up to positive and negative on the pack. So plugging it in is pretty straightforward. Uh, and we should hear a pop when this first connects um, for the high voltage connection here. And it's uh, you know it's all reasonably safe because it's inside of that uh, that casing. And here we go. There's the pop, and we are in nice and securely. Uh, obviously, the 12 volt connection. Similarly, is the this here, and this we typically don't hear a pop because it's just the 12 volt. Um, and so I'm going to take these and uh, secure them better, like uh, up under here, zip tie them or something so they're not hanging or touching anything. But uh, anyway, so that's just in the front. And then they'll look kind of nice uh, once it's up there out of the way. And again, easily connectable and disconnectable should I need to. Um, so because this is a dual setup, we also have the same kind of deal going on over here. So this is the original location where I had the DC to DC converter mounted. And uh, I just mounted it here again. Um, but this time I used the same kind of setup with the Anderson connector and the uh, computer power supply connections. Um, Granted, that isn't the most waterproof setup in the world, but it's what I've used right along all through the central New York winter. I think it will be just fine. Um, so, as you can tell, you can actually hear me talking over these things because they don't have fans that are loud and obnoxious like the good old Vicor. So, I installed them, was happy that they were silent, um, and then we went and did some testing. And so what I did was go ahead and we'll turn on the ignition. So it's just the ignition, which is the soliton and the um, router, the, the Linksys router. And from our little display here, you can see we're putting out a nice uh, solid amount of power. And we could go and look, put a multimeter on it to see, but it's a 13.9, uh, give or take, seems to be what these guys are putting out. But listen. So, it's hissing, just like the old one did. <laughs> and in fact, both of them do exactly the same thing. Um, we get kind of a dual hissing noise. So my guess is that the hissing is actually par for the course for these little Chinook uh, DC to DC converters. Might have something to do with the fact that I'm running at 200 volts and they're rated at 192 volts. Um, you know, maybe that puts extra stress on them or something and makes them hiss. But the last one I had did that from as soon as I opened it out of the box, and these are doing the exact same thing. Um, you know, wiring is very straightforward. There's positive goes to the pack positive, and negative goes to pack negative, and uh, there you go. So I don't think I could have possibly screwed that up. You know, pack positive right there, pack negative right there. You can see the little uh, white wire under there. That's actually what goes to that plug. Um, and then there's a black one underneath on the red there. But uh, so anyway, I. Just figured I'd, I'd mention it since we were going through the motions. But uh, if we go ahead and turn on some load, like, oh, I don't know, how about the headlights? Uh, 
So we can hear a very pronounced hissing coming from this thing now that it's having to work a little harder. Um, and it is getting quite warm, <laughs> just like the old one did. Um, again, not too bad. I can I can touch it without feeling like I'm going to burn my fingers off or anything, but um, but it's definitely very warm. So it's not awful. Um, but there's definitely a noise to these things, you know? Um, my car is completely silent when everything else is running. The Soliton doesn't make any funky noises, etc. But the DC to DC converters, are, they're just loud. And it's got to be by design. Um, so, anyway, so that's just with you know, the lights on, um, nothing else really going on. A little bit of change in pitch from high beam to low beam, but really not too much. Um, unfortunately, most of the other things that I've got that uh, would make more load on it do make a lot of noise on their um, by themselves, such as the DC or the um, power steering pump or the power brake pump. But we can go ahead and turn those on, and just to kind of see what the power does here. So, you know, drop down a little bit, but not too bad. Um, and so that's just with the power steering pump running. And it's probably hard to hear. Over the whine of the power steering pump. But there is a <laughs> even more pronounced hissing sound coming from the DC to DC converters. I I don't get it. <laughs> I, uh, so anyway, that is what they do. And uh, I went through and did a test um, where I I turned off. I turned everything on, had the wipers going, and the power steering pump, and the headlights, and the rear wiper, and all that good stuff, um, brake lights on, and these two DC to DC converters were able to, to hold up, um, and only when I strained the power steering pump, uh, in like way over to the right or the left, would it drop down to about 11 volts, is uh, what they were putting out. Uh, but they otherwise held pretty well, and uh, I, I think is a is a fine solution. So let's go ahead and listen. I'm just going to turn off the headlights, and you can hear the immediate uh, more quietness that'll happen from the DC to DC converter. Let's try it. Now if I shut off the, the dashboard, which also shuts off the soliton and the router, we're back to silent running, or silent not running, as the case may be. Um, so that is the story uh, for the 87 Daytona EV today. Um, the D new DC to DC converters from EVTV uh, have been installed, and they do work. Um, they are running through the diode and the inductor um, from the original setup. And again, they seem to work just fine. They do put out the power, but they do make this funky hissing noise. Um, because I've now had a total of three of them that have done exactly the same thing, I'm reasonably confident that that's normal, um, despite no one else ever noticing that before. So, <laughs> whatever, I guess we'll go forward and uh, it should be fine. <laughs> Take care and have a wonderful day.